Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, how Node is, is really kind of going everywhere and some of the vision that we see for Node uh, in the future. There we go. So Node is the fastest growing open source platform in the world. It, it's important to remember that, that this project is growing quicker than we've ever seen anything since the web, really. Um, if you look at this in just terms of raw packages, we're now about double the size of the next package system down, and we're still growing at a faster rate than every other package ecosystem. So a quarter million today is probably something like a half a million in a year or two from now. That's crazy. <laughs> That's so many packages, and this is important for most developers because most developers don't want to write everything from scratch. You want to be able to leverage other work that people have done in the community, and so having a large and diverse set of packages is really important. More than 400 packages get published literally every day. That's new publishes, not updates to existing packages. That's great. That's bonkers. Okay. Um, Node now has around three and a half million users. Um, but we also have a sustainable 100% growth rate year over year for the last three years. And we have no signs that this is showing down. So in a year from now, that's going to be 7 million. And in a year from then, it may be 14 million. Um, that's, that's an amazingly huge community of people doing Node development. Um, when we start to look at what people are doing with Node and why it's growing so big, you've really got to look at the whole stack that a modern developer has to contend with. So it used to be the full stack kind of meant doing a web front end and doing a back end. But then we kind of like started doing mobile and tablets and dealing with varying sizes. And then, you know, it turns out desktop apps are still a thing. Like you still run them on your computer all the time. Um, and most big applications tend to see a lot of users still using desktop apps. Um, we have this whole new set of API services, right? Both from other providers and ones that we spin up ourselves. So we have tiers sitting between our back end and our front end now. Um, and just to make this super complicated, let's throw a bunch of random IoT devices in there that developers now have to work with, right? And if every single one of these environments is a completely different tool chain and debug environment and language, this becomes incredibly difficult to grapple with as a developer nowadays. And the only thing that can really resolve that is having a unified platform that works well in all these environments and can bring that ecosystem to all these environments. And that's what Node.js is. Um, so just to, to kick off, let's look at front-end web development. So front-end web development has changed so dramatically in the last five years, it's almost unrecognizable if you were a web developer before, right? So first we saw a huge amount of growth in little tools that developers need to use um, when they're doing front-end development. Linting, CSS compilation, transpilation for new features, um, compression, all that kind of stuff, right? So those moved to, to Node for obvious reasons, like, you know, Node is in JavaScript, it's a bit more accessible for those developers. Um, but then we, we had such a huge thriving community of these tools that we actually had to build tools to manage all of the tools in the tool chain that you're doing. Um, so then we had a bunch of those tools that manage all the other tools that you're doing, right? Um, and then something happened that I don't think anybody really expected, which is that we went from a world where a front-end framework was a thing that you dropped into a script tag before your code in your page, and we moved to the front-end framework actually being a compile chain and actually being this thing that you can hack on and add features that aren't even in the browser as long as you can get them to work as an export environment. So React is really, I mean, whatever you feel about React in general, it has fundamentally shifted the way that we're going to think about front-end frameworks indefinitely into the future because you can do so much more in a compile chain um, when you're thinking about the web as the, as the output than you ever can in a script tag, right? So then let's look at mobile development. So mobile development uh, for native applications is, is dramatically different on each device, right? So Cordova came around and said, we're going to bring like web technologies and a kind of unified platform for cross-platform mobile development, right? So what they ended up doing in a, in a later release is actually also bringing Node into that platform and building that compile chain and their entire ecosystem of plugins 
on Node as well. So they're leveraging the entire community and the entire ecosystem that we have to bring web development and all of those tools to cross-platform mobile development. Desktop, it, it, it's amazing to me that we're writing desktop applications still. Like, I remember in, in like 2005, we were like, oh, desktop apps are dead, everything's gonna be a website, like, look, you're using Gmail, this is crazy. Uh, it turns out that, like, we actually do still need desktop applications for a lot of things, and they're a real pain in the ass to write, especially cross-platform. So Electron was built by GitHub uh, to basically bring web and the entire NPM ecosystem to desktop development. Right? So now you can write a single application that actually feels good on all of these platforms, and you can use virtually every module in NPM to do it. Right? Th this means that a lot of people can now build desktop applications that could not build desktop applications before because they did not want to learn Visual Studio. Um, but, but just to see this all kind of come full circle, right? you probably have used one of these before and not even known it because it feels so good. I mean, Slack is built on Electron, right? Microsoft Visual Studio Code is built on Electron using Node.js. Like, th you know, these are things that, you know, five years ago I would have said that you're crazy that this is happening, but it actually is happening, right? And just to bring the whole world full circle, they wrote a web browser in this as well, right? So the Brave browser is actually built on Electron, leveraging Node.js, leveraging the Node ecosystem. Um, so the language that we took from the browser into the platform is now driving a new browser, which is crazy. Um, and you know, this is just a huge growth area because it really is the easiest way to build nice cross-platform applications for the desktop. Backend has always been a big part of Node's story. Um, and so it's, it's not a huge surprise that we continue to see it grow in backends. Developers really don't want to rack their own servers. So every, there's a lot of great new cloud providers that provide you with infrastructure. When you look at all of these cloud offerings, one of their top supported languages is always Node.js. There's a bunch of other languages that vary around all of them and then top level support for Node. And that's because Node, if you, if you talk to them, Node is like the fastest growing platform on pretty much every one of these cloud providers. Um, and th the more well supported that we are in every cloud provider, the better all of your code runs. So that's good for everybody. Um, okay, here we go. All right, so now let's talk about IoT and how difficult this is gonna make everybody's lives. Uh, <laughs> so uh, IoT development has been very difficult and in a lot of kind of custom languages for quite a while. Uh, early on in, in Node's history, developers started to realize that Node was actually a really good fit for IoT for a couple reasons. One is that we have 20 years of experience now doing evented programming in JavaScript. It, it, the way that the web works is that you click on things and events happen, right? And IoT is basically that, but in the real world. So instead of clicking buttons, you actually trip over a sensor or something in the real world actually happens. And that really does need to be an event and evented programming is a very good model for that. So we have a huge history of that and a big track record of people building great abstractions for that. So we have things like Johnny Five being built by people from jQuery to basically make a jQuery ease in IoT development for robots and whatnot. But in the last year, we've seen another shift, which is that all of the major IoT platform makers, the people that are actually creating the little integrated things that everybody's building these IoT devices on, they're putting Node on the device, including on crazy low power stuff like Galileo and the Tesla 2. These are pretty low power devices. These aren't, you know, like basically like, you know, little Linux boxes that you can do anything on. A, a significant amount of work even went into porting to make it work there. But once it's there, it turns out that Node is actually a really good fit to run on device as well because it's very, it's not very resource intensive. It sits around and does nothing very well uh, while it's waiting for an event to happen. Uh, and it can also do a ton of I.O. in a very low memory and CPU footprint, right? So this is actually really nice for, for IoT. Also, when you bring Node and the Node ecosystem to these platforms, you open these platforms up to an entire world of programmers that just didn't have access to participate in doing IoT development before, right? We have a massive ecosystem that we bring here and a lot of great educational resources as well. Over the last maybe five years, uh, we've seen a dramatic increase in API usage among developers. So, and it, it's 
it's now happening not just in APIs that you consume on the internet. You're, we're also seeing applications being built as APIs and developers in big enterprise shops putting app APIs in between their, their traditional back end and their front end, right? So we have this whole new API area um, that's really getting fueled by microservices because microservice technologies make it much easier to just spin up these, these different APIs and have a bunch of them sitting around. It turns out that the more that you cut up a piece of hardware into a bunch of different Docker instances and microservices, it becomes very important that the language platform be very efficient per process. Um, and so Node, again, is a great fit here because it can do so much with so little resources. Um, and in enterprise, we're seeing a huge amount of adoption uh, of Node. Probably the, the biggest thing that's really happened to enterprise since traditional languages like .NET and Java. Uh, and a lot of this is, is being fueled by the fact that we are very efficient in a new microservices environment, which is what a lot of these people are working are moving towards. We, just in the last year, we've also seen a ton of new offerings from cloud providers that are completely serverless APIs for developers to use, right? So first it was AWS Lambda, but now everybody's got something. And these are, these are amazing to use because you don't have to worry about the actual infrastructure of keeping a machine up. You just write your little node program and it runs your little node program and will run more of your little node program as you need it, right? So we're a very good fit for this technology-wise because we have an incredibly fast startup time. So if you're gonna dynamically create more instances of this, it's very important that your startup time is low. Um, in this space, Node is the primary platform that all of these people are pushing, right? In some of these, it's the only language that you can write for, the, for this new offering. So Node, this may just be the future of how we build applications as well. And the fact that Node is front and center is kind of amazing. Um, and the fact that the project is only six years, seven years old now. Um, and, and we're already really driving the future of cloud. The most important thing, though, isn't that we're a really good fit in any particular one of these verticals. It's that we've created a universal transferable skill set on all of those platforms. So in order to participate in software development, we're really lowering the barrier to entry, and we're creating an entire ecosystem and educational resources and outreach. And when we do those things, we actually end up doing them for all of these different areas of computing, not just one particular place or vertical. And that's important because if software is going to eat the world, it's really important that as many people as possible get to participate in software development and in the world of software development. Uh, and no platform is better at doing that than Node. Thank you, that's my talk. Um, all right.